I'm now going to show you how to make a graph using Excel. First, we need to open the Excel application. There are two ways to do this. You can either click on the Windows icon and find Excel in the list of applications right here. Or in the search bar, you can type in Excel, E-X-C-L, and then click on that app. Once Excel is opened, go ahead and click on blank workbook to create a new file. Now that Excel is opened, let's learn how to navigate on this app. Notice that the columns always have letters and then the rows have numbers. We refer to cells by their number and letter designations. So this cell that I'm clicking in right now is cell A1. When we want to start using Excel, we always start putting in data in cell A1. Column A will always display data that will be on the X axis or the horizontal axis. So for our investigation, we were looking at coffee concentration. And notice I can click in that cell to type in coffee concentration and I'm always going to put in my units of measurement, which is percentage, and I can either press enter or up here at the top, I can click the check mark. And now I have that data label where I know that I'm going to put in the data for coffee concentration. If I hover between A and B columns, I can hold down my left button and pull to make my A column larger. I'm now going to click in B1 to enter in my data for my Y axis, which would, should be my growth rate. I can either start typing in growth rate now into cell B1 or I can type this information up here. And this will be my growth rate and I'm going to put in my units of measurement, which is centimeters per day. I can click enter, and that information is now in the spreadsheet. Remember, I can hover between columns B and C, holding down my left button, and pull across to enlarge that column as well. Now we can put in the data. Here are my different coffee concentrations that range from 0 to 100 and my growth rates that began in 0 0.27, 0 0.38, 0 0.39, 0 0.58, and then the last one those plants were dying so they actually had a decrease in height so I had a negative 0.12. Notice that I never put in any letters that accompany my numbers. Now that I have all my data points in Excel, I'm, going, I'm ready to create my graph. I'm going to click and hold A1, and then I'm going to drag down and across to B5, so that A1 through B5 are all highlighted. Come up to Insert, and then notice that I have recommended charts, and then I also have other column charts, line graphs, pie charts, XY plots, histograms, and a whole bunch of graphs that are available to me. I'm going to click on recommended charts. Notice that I have two charts here that look like they would fit my data. So clicking on the first chart, I'm going to click OK. Notice that once I have this chart, I can move it around wherever I want to on my spreadsheet. So it looks like all of my data points are plotted appropriately, and I can see that this last data point is below the zero, or my x-axis, and since it's negative, that makes sense. The next thing I need to do, though, is I don't like that title because that doesn't have my independent variable, my dependent variable, 
and the organism that I investigated. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click in this title and I'm going to change that to a more appropriate one. The effect of coffee concentration on growth rate of radishes. So now that I have an appropriate title, I notice that I do not have any um, axes labels. So I'm going to click in the chart again to activate it. And notice when I click out of the chart, it's not activated. I'm going to click back on the chart and now it is. And notice that you have a couple buttons here on the right. I'm going to click on the plus button and I'm going to make sure that I have axes titles. Once those are clicked, I notice here that this axis title is now activated. I can either click in that axis title or I can click up here in that bar and now I can label my Y axis. Remember my Y axis is always going to be my dependent variable, what I measured and that was growth rate. And notice that I'm making sure to put in my units of measurement and I can either hit enter or the check mark and now my y-axis is labeled. I'm going to click on the axis title for my x-axis and I'm going to insert a label for my x-axis which is coffee concentration but I'm going to make sure that I also include units of measurement. This graph is now done. If I wanted to make a bar graph instead, remember we just highlight our data, click insert, I'm going to go to recommended charts and one of those is a bar graph as well and click OK. Remember this bar graph has an inappropriate title so I would need to change that title to make sure that I include the independent variable which is coffee concentration that was changed the dependent variable, which was, which was growth rate, and the subject, which is radishes. I would also need to click in the graph to activate it in order to get the plus sign to put in axis titles. The first axis title that is activated is a y-axis, so I can label that growth rate and put in my units of measurement, and then I can click into my x-axis label and label that coffee concentration and make sure that I put in units of measurement. Both of these graphs are appropriate for my data set and I'm now done and I'm ready to either submit it to my teacher or if I want I can click in this graph Notice I clicked in the title first, so then I clicked a little bit to the right, and I can right click, and I could copy this graph, and I can post it in a Google Doc or a Word Doc or wherever I would want to as well.